So next question is, what effect or how might Dantian breathing affect performance uh, in, in different movements? And so looking through uh, different studies, it's not, of course, it's not anything referring to Dantian breathing. But the closest thing I could find is what's called the Valsalval maneuver. And this is used uh, both clinically to check heart conditions, but also in powerlifting. So how it works is uh, the lifter takes a big breath and then contracts the transversus abdominis, kind of pulling the belly in and attempting to exhale, what's referred to as exhale through a closed glottis, basically trying to exhale with your mouth closed. And if we go back and think about what muscles are activa activated when we exhale, that's the pelvic floor muscles and the transversus abdominis to increase that intra-abdominal pressure and push the diaphragm back up, blowing the air out. If we look at the endpoints of both the Dantian breathing and the Volsalva maneuver, we see the same muscles activated and that uh, same intra-abdominal pressure being increased. So we look at the Dantian breathing, when we breathe in, the transversus abdominis is contracted, preventing outward motion of the belly, and the pelvic floor is contracted, uh, increasing that intra-abdominal pressure as the diaphragm presses down. And the Vasalva maneuver, the setup is just a little bit different. The diaphragm presses down. Typically, a uh, lifter will have like a weightlifting belt or something on that would prevent the belly from uh, protruding or pushing outward. And then when going to lift, there's that exhale, but the mouth is closed. And what you'll see often is like the lifter's cheeks, cheeks puffed up or something. Uh, to, which is increasing that intra-abdominal pressure. This action also kind of happens uh, somewhat naturally for most people. I uh, think if you've ever tried to lift something extremely heavy, you get that, you know, you, you close your mouth, hold your breath, and try to and push uh, through. Anytime you try to push something really heavy, this is a common uh, natural response. And that's basically increasing intra-abdominal pressure. Well, there's a couple of studies I've found regarding the diaphragm and intra-abdominal pressure and its relation to performance and other aspects. So the first one uh, uh, here that is particular to lifting is intra-abdominal pressure and abdominal wall muscular function, spinal unloading mechanism. And this a study you can find on the uh, NIH website and it's the full study is listed here full paper is here so you can read the whole thing if you want but it basically creates a uh, biomechanical model and studies how intra-abdominal pressure and the abdominal muscles create a uh, mechanism to take loads off the spine which would be done in activities such as powerlifting or any other activity where the spine would be loaded. Another one that I thought was of particular interest is the study, does intra-abdominal pressure have a causal effect on muscle strength of hip and knee joints? Uh, this one, I only had access to the abstract. Uh, it's in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, uh, January 2021. So it's a pretty new article. Basically, just reading the abstract here, um, they said that there's some evidence to suggest that an increase in intra-abdominal pressure has a causal effect to improve the muscle strength of the hip extensors. And if you know, remember the hip extensors are like the uh, glutes. Another one that's kind of interesting is this one uh, that talks about the it's, uh, La Selva maneuver specifically. And they did a study on isometric strength, which is strength or tension when the joint is not moving or the length is, is fixed. And this one found that the Valsalva maneuver and forced exhalation had relatively the same uh, impact on peak force for all the tested muscle groups. So this is kind of an interesting one here as well. So typical sports uh, 
breathing generally involves exhaling on like uh, you look at javelin throwing discus shot putt you all see that exhale tennis serves there's a strong exhale when exploding so there's evidence here to support that but the Valsalvan maneuver also has a equivalent impact as well I came across two other studies that have more to do with the diaphragm itself and diaphragm thickness uh, the first one here is the impact of diaphragm function parameters on balance maintenance. And this based study basically uh, concludes that uh, weakness uh, represented by uh, a loss of diaphragm thickness or disorder uh, or restriction in diaphragm movement affects a person's balance or can cause balance disorders. And this last one is particularly interesting is ven ventilatory muscle strength diaphragm thickness and pulmonary function in world-class power lifters and this one shows how power lifters have increased diaphragm thickness when compared to the normal population and the study concludes that this is due to uh, weight lifting but it would be interesting to look at and compare populations that do intense breathing exercises which involve abdominal breathing pranayama qigong People who really pra practice these things strongly versus the power lifters system see how the diaphragm thickness compares to both the power lifter population and the general population as well because it could be that the heavy weights is necessary to increase intra-abdominal pressure to a level that the diaphragm becomes thicker uh, and not just the breathing alone so that's a number of studies that provide uh, some support for why you might train uh, different breathing uh, aspects to uh, improve strength or performance and why you'd want to train the diaphragm and those muscles along the abdominal wall specifically. Uh, it, it may be also uh, important to note or compare how doing uh, more uh, more common calisthenic based abdominal exercises to breathing exercises like the belly breathing diaphragmic breathing pranayama qigong and compare how the uh, the effects of those two wow. whether doing just the breathing exercises has a similar effect to doing sit-ups crunches things like that is one better than the other, or are they better combined, etc. So I want to present some of my own theory regarding uh, the tension uh, concept when doing these different breathing exercises and trying to understand how they might help performance as indicated by some of the studies um, that I found and presented. So when we look at um, these various breathing exercises, we see that the diaphragm is contracted. So we have tension going from the front and back through the, basically bisecting the body at the diaphragm. Uh, tension going around the circumference of the body, of the waist, abdominal region, uh, implemented by the transversus abdominis activating. And we have tension front and back along the pelvic floor, connecting the front and back of that cylinder, creating tension there due to activation of the um, pelvic floor muscles. So this create that uh, like a tensile cylinder connecting front and back, side to side across the diaphragm, around the circumference of the waist via the transverse abdominis and the pelvic floor creating that uh, closure of the cylinder at the bottom. Now if we go back and refer to the thoracolumbar fascia, remember that the transversus abdominis uh, connects into the thoracolumbar fascia, and that thoracolumbar fascia also connects to the gluteus maximus. So it makes sense somewhat that creating tension in the areas uh, around the thoracolumbar fascia would increase 
the activation of the gluteus maximus, similar to having a string under tension when you pull on one side, you feel it immediately on the other, and the tighter and tighter you make that string, the faster that force or impulse on one end will transfer to the other side. And if we recall similarly, on the front of the body, the rectus sheath consists of the transversus abdominis, uh, external obliques and internal obliques. And that point below the navel, the transversus abdominis is in front of the rectus abdominis. So that's pulling everything in there uh, when the transversus abdominis uh, becomes active. And looking at forces again across the rectus sheath, we see connections into the adductor muscles and the pectineus muscle in addition to uh, forces transferring up into the pectoral muscles. The con connection to the pectoral muscle is kind of interesting because as we saw in the study with the isometric strength test, we see breathing influence shoulder adduction and not abduction. So adduction is bringing the uh, arm towards your body, abduction is pulling it away, and the pectoral muscles are involved in adduction as opposed to uh, abduction. I'm going to give the caveat to all this. I'm just kind of theorizing, brainstorming ideas uh, with some cursory evidence. This is not proof by any means. I'll admit that right away. Um, but it's just some interesting things to think about and study from a physiological and kinesiological standpoint a lot of these methods and try to understand the mechanism behind them use uh, fundamental science to support it uh, one more point of interest with regarding to the tension lines uh, if we recall uh, as well the diaphragm fascia is continuous with the fascia of that of the psoas and uh, quadratus lumborum so tension in the diaphragm is possible may pass on to the psoas and quadratus lumborum creating uh, support or increased activation in both uh, hip flexion uh, via the psoas muscles and uh, trunk extension via the quadratus lumborum or simply uh, increase isometric stability through the uh, spine via the quadratus lumborum.